Okay, we are back for the game most people are waiting for, which is the the the, the Maine versus the Minnesota State University Mavericks. That's correct. Maine is called Maine University Black Bears. So University of Maine Black Bears. So. Uh, Swayman and McKay, a big matchup. It says McKay is cold and Swayman is hot. It probably won't matter with Dryden McKay, though, because he, he's like a really good goalie. Yes, he is. He's, How, in, he's in the top ten. Oh, the, Mark McKay was just coming down. Yep. He's in the top ten for Hobie Baker. Yep, so is, uh, so is Swayman, though. Swayman? Yep, the goalie. Oh, here are the Mavericks going on power play and McKay driving down with a shot but nothing. So, yes, uh, both of them are both for, up for the Hobie Baker and... For the uh, the Mike Richter, which is the best goalie, so and most people think these are the top two choices. Now, McKay led in wins, save percentage, goals against average. Ooh, big shot. Led also in the shutouts. Uh, le- uh, was second in minutes. Uh, Swayman had the most saves. So uh, it was pretty close in save percentage. So some people think because he had more action. That uh, almost went in. I did. Here's Gerads. Ooh, big save by everybody Swayman. Uh, some people think because Swayman had more action. I, I don't know. To me, it's, you know, if you don't have a whole lot of action, it's hard to stay in the game a lot of times. I think it's very impressive that McKay can get shutouts with only 10 or 12 shots on him uh, because a lot of those shots are, you know, breakaways and you got to pay attention the whole time when a lot of the action isn't coming away. But, you know. Uh, that's why they vote, I guess. Uh, whatever the national pundits think, they guess they'll go with. Two Mavericks people got got into the the top ten for Hobie Baker. That's true. Number twenty, which is Mark Michaelis, and, and number twenty nine, which is Dryden McKay, which is the goalie. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so Swayman. So this is the only game so far this tournament we've had where there's been three people up for Hobie Baker, and uh, unless you know, who knows what will happen here, but. Uh, it might be the only game we have with three Hobie Baker finalists. You just never know. Um, so to go over what the uh, what we're looking at here, we have uh, Mark Michaelis uh, is one of the players to watch, obviously, number 20. And now they're going back on the power play. Uh, he had 20 goals, 24 assists, and a 1.42 points per game average. Dryden McKay was had 30 wins, four losses, two ties with a one point. 3-1 goals against average. Yeah, these are people for the Mavericks. Yep. Uh, 942 save percentage and 10 shutouts, which is the second most in NCAA history. Um, Wait, tied who, for second. Who's number one? I'm, I don't have to look it up right offhand. I'm not sure. But uh, I know that person, I think, had 12. Ooh, they, they tried a one-timer. Yep. So uh, now for the main Black Bears, uh, Mitchell Fossier, or Fossier, maybe? Uh, 10 goals, 32 assists for 1.24 points per game. So they have two pretty big uh, offensive guns, unlike the Mavericks, who are pretty spread out and have quite a few ma- offensive players. Ooh, big save. Bo- or both trip these there. teams have a number one. Yep. They both have a number one, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, Jacob Berger uh, and Evan Foss are the other two goalies for the Mavericks. Neither will get to play in the series because, <laughs> you know, goalies don't get hurt. So... Uh, in this thing, and I just kept it in the whole time. So neither Swayman's backups or uh, McKay's backups will be in. Oh, big save. Oh, it looked like there's going to be a tip in there I'm by McKay. I'm I am the guy that just got out of the penalty box for the other team. Okay. <laughs> so uh, for Jeremy Sway- Swayman, who's the other goalie that's a Hobie Baker and uh, Mike Richter finalist here, his record this year was 18, 11, and 5 with a 2.07 goals against average. 939 save percentage and three shutouts. Julian Aprofnik almost scored, which was number yep. 15. He almost scored. So we're already down to two minutes and 20-some seconds and no scoring so far, which isn't surprising. Uh, here comes Reggie Lutz. Ooh, Nothing. that was close. So a little bit of passing back and forth here. Oh, there we got it. The Reece puck is there. Zmolik, yep. Ooh, oh, big he, shot. He tried a one-timer. Yep. That, I'm not sure who that was. Probably in the Provnik, though, because he was coming down the middle a little bit. And, oh, huge check by uh, the Spoon, Jared Spooner. Oh, looked like he was getting in there. Couldn't quite get there. And then coming down. Just block. She shoots it right under my bricks. And here comes Michaela, so right off the pass. What Pass. was that? I'm not sure what <laughs> was. Somebody was certainly not happy about that. So 
oh, Toomey stayed on side. I wasn't sure. It looked like uh, Souter was maybe a little bit behind him, but they said the puck got in before him there. All right, three seconds left. Looking like we're going to be tied after one. Well, let's take a look at the stats here after one with Maine and Minnesota State. Black Bears had eight shots, Minnesota State on ten. That's pretty close. Power play, the Mavericks had two chances, but nothing going in. Only one power play shot. Lots of body checks thrown around by the Mavericks, 11, but uh, Maine's winning the faceoff battle. And the attack zone a little bit toward the Mavericks side. Here we go for, for second the, period. The second period. Who's winning the faceoff? Minnesota State won the faceoff. Yep. Michaelis with the winner, and uh, Toomey tried to sneak in the back door there. He couldn't quite get to that side. All right, uh, coming down Souter to Toomey again. Oh, Toomey doesn't quite wait patiently enough to get it there. Big check on uh, Scheid. Ooh, lots of action. Oh, we had uh, McKay. McKay was on the ground there. Oh, and they couldn't get the rebound. Oh, my goodness. It looked like... Uh, Connor Mackey had a chance there at that second point of the rebound. Uh, Main up close. Oh, they could have pulled the trigger. Souter coming down. Lucas Souter. Yep. Oh, he almost And now uh, Main's on the Fossier there and gets it to uh, Daughtery. Daughtery uh, doesn't quite hit the big shot. And Toomey just looking to clear the zone. Oh, interception. Now just to kind of... Uh, a little bit of background on the Mavericks and Maine here. Um, the Mavericks had uh, 4.03 points per game, which is just a little better than Boston College for number one in the nation, and had 1.47 goals against this year, which was number one in the nation. So you're watching as the Mavericks were the number one team in offense and defense, according to the uh, stats this year. Um, Maine Black Bears, uh, they didn't do so well in offense uh, comparatively. 37th in the nation at 2.62 goals per game. And uh, a 2.21 goals against average for 10th. Do they have a good chance of scoring? Oh, oh! oh. oh. Gerads just keeps hammering away but doesn't quite go. Dallas Gerads. <laughs> yeah. So when it comes to the uh, Mavericks, they on paper have the better team, but of course, uh, you know, had a little different kind of situation of where they these teams had to play. Um, Maine, all their games are probably within about six hours of where Maine is located, where Mavericks usually had to travel quite a bit further, especially the Alaska trip, which they always have to go by plane after getting to Minneapolis and flying in. So there's always a little bit of that jet lag situation, but they get to play more games since they get to go to Alaska. Oh, big shot by Michaelis and doesn't go. So some of their stats might be a little bit more... Uh, up there just because they get to play more games because of the Alaska trip. Uh, one of the NCAA rules is if you go to Alaska once or twice, you get uh, extra games on your schedule to kind of pay for uh, <laughs> the trip, from what I understand. Oh, big big breakaway from Michaelis. Oh, he tries the one-timer back to, uh, to me, but nothing going. All right, here we go again. Oh, a big steal. We have uh, Fossier driving down. Oh, tries to backhand it, but uh, Jack McNeely was there. Going to face it off at the uh, offside circle. And Spooner coming in. Oh, tries to backhand it there, a real hard backhander. The checking crew here, uh, Napravnik isn't a real big guy, but the other two are, uh, Drads and Spooner are definitely two bigger gen individuals here. A uh, few Mavericks who didn't get to play on this game because of the fact we only have uh, three lines uh, would be, uh, for example, uh, Nick Rivera didn't get to be on there because, again, I went by purely by uh, points per game. These were the nine highest in points per game for the Mavericks. Um Another one, uh, Josh French, the two seniors, which uh, played every game uh, from uh, <laughs> as long as I can remember, pretty much. Uh, also, uh, two bigger players that typically are in there would be Walker Dewar and Jake Jeremko. So because of only three lines, they couldn't get everybody else in. Although they are on the roster because we had them on the roster from before. For Maine, there, I'm sure there's uh, several players here that uh, people go, hey, where's that guy at? And that, if you wonder why they're not in there, that's oh, Big save there by McKay from a huge shot. 
And here comes Toomey again. Oh, didn't part of the trigger. Big shot probably by uh, Michaelis there, I'm guessing. Although I couldn't tell. Michaelis and... Well, Mark Michaelis and Jake Taranko were hurt for a while. Yes, they and, were. But after Jake Taranko got back in, he he, he he didn't he he didn't do as well as he did before. But Mark Michaelis st- stayed really good after 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 he came back. Yeah, well, sometimes it's hard to come back from injury. Uh, 23 shots for MSU, 14 for Maine. So MSU started bringing it on a little bit more of that period, but nothing coming in. But, but I forgot, Jake Taranko was actually sick. Yep, that's right. He was. He had a couple spouts with uh, weird problems this year. You know, it, that's part of the game, unfortunately, is they play on Here unless, of course, uh, coronavirus comes in. All right. So Fossier trying go. to get there. Oh, <laughs> offside. Souter just didn't let the... Uh, the foot drag there for his uh, compatriot. 9.43 left here, very early in the third. No score yet. Souter. Ooh, Souter oh trying to get in there. Souter! Good try. Yeah. Oh, offside. Another offside. Wow, yeah. that was quick. That was. That was uh, J.D. Greenway, who was, I think, uh, one of the top of defensemen there for Maine. <laughs> and now we have uh, driving down there, number 34, uh, Edwards Talmax? That's what number Cole Huggins, who used to play for the Mavericks, was. That's he true. was a goalie. That's true. Cole Huggins was a heck of a guy getting in front of shots. I tell you, he was one of the best I've seen at it. But he had a tough time controlling the puck for some reason. I don't know. It, it was a weird deal. Wait, do you think Stefan Williams or Cole Huggins was better? I think Stefan Williams by just a little bit. Um, oh, there comes the penalty on the Mavs. Think. Yep, Souter got tripping. In real life, it, it went... It wouldn't have been anything like that because he didn't even hit the guy with his stick. Oh, they look, <laughs> luckily they got through that. And there's a charging call. So Patrick. So assuming nobody's, you know, it looks like the Mavericks are going to get four seconds worth of power play out of this. Not exactly a huge amount to score in. Ooh, Ooh. that was close. Oh, Toomey tried to get her in close. Didn't work. Still zero to zero. Yeah, yeah with in regards to Stefan Williams versus Huggins, Huggins seemed to have a tough time controlling that puck. When it gets there, he blocked a heck of a lot of pucks, but it seemed like he had a tough time controlling it, where Stefan Williams was a little better at the control of it. Stefan Williams certainly was a memorable guy, though. He did lots of uh, strange things, like uh, knocking the goal off the net against the Gophers at one time, giving the Gophers a penalty shot when they're up, when the Mavs are up by two. Luckily, he stopped it. Uh, late in the game, and then uh, there was the five-minute major he got for uh, face masking, although I don't know how the Wisconsin guy didn't get a (laughs) five-minute major for, like, basically rushing right into him, but, you know, whatever. Stefan Williams also uh, uh, had one of those... uh, Before college, he had a big save with a... As a Sioux Fall, or when he was playing for Sioux Falls, I believe it was, where his glove got knocked off, and he saved it with his bare hand. Can you imagine that? He was always nodding to the music every time when they're in the breaks. <laughs> yeah, quite a few things. And, of course, oh, he was the goalie was, that... That was so close to scoring. Yeah, He was the goalie, of course, that happened when uh, when Palmquist uh, looked like he got pushed into the goalie. And uh, that's when uh, RIT scored uh, their... Ended up being winning goal on that, but... Uh, you know, a lot of weird stuff happened with Stefan Williams. Huggins was more, I guess, more more normal of the situations. What does RIT stand for? Rochester Institute of Technology. Hmm. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, big one. Oh, oh off post. The, off the wheel post. Charlie Gerard went post on that one. Almost a Maverick lead. but Bad post. Bad post. Well, you know, that, that's why we play the game. You, you only get six feet. You don't get six feet one inch. All right, so Mavericks coming down. There is Gerard again. Let's see if he can get something without the post in the way. No, nope. instead there was a Swayman in the way. All right, now a big drive by number 29 for Maine, and that was Adrian Bisson. Offside. All right, 2.44 left. Still looking for that first goal of the game. Uh, I guess when you have two of the best goalies in the 
in the country, it makes sense that they're having a tough time scoring. Oh, couldn't Look get back on. Side. Yeah, I thought that guy was going to get back on side, whoever that was. but That was Lucas Alder. Well, I mean the guy on the other side. Oh. I think that was probably Toomey. Looked like he was coming right back on the line, but must have just not got there. Well, now it uh, happened to Maine, too. <laughs> Looked like he was getting back on side and couldn't quite get there. 2-19 left. Getting pretty uh, antsy here. See if the Mavericks or the Black Bears can get on that goal. Right now, no one's getting anywhere near the goal. Looks like it's going to have to be a greasy one to win this one because it doesn't look like any of the pretty ones are going today with these two goalies. Oh, going to be on the power play of the Mavericks. Oh, big save there by Swayman, but nobody there to Shaq Diesler in. Lev Claybar looks like he's going the the box, and the Mavs are on the power play. Oh. Wait, is the eye silent? Perhaps. I'm not sure how I... I asked for people to give me some hard pronunciations, but nobody sent anything back, so I'm taking my best guess. There, we got Nathan Smith coming down the ice. Ooh, big save. Oh, what, what was he doing there? Oh, and Gerads scores! Dallas Gerads on the... Uh, on the terrible decision by Swayman with 55 seconds left. Wow, that, of all the things that would be it, you get the greasy goal, but you get the greasy goal because the goalie passes it right to you. All right, 48 seconds. Let's see if McKay can hold him off the board. Clean and clean, clean and clean, clean and clean. So here we still near the Maverick zone in the in the neutral zone there. All right. Uh, 28 seconds left, and we have uh, Toomey trying to get an insurance goal. Just sitting there. He's just sitting there saying, I'm just going to kill off time. Oh, how did Michaela miss that one? I, he could have had an easy one, but it doesn't matter because the Mavericks win. A one to nothing game. Yeah, you can see Dryden McKay, number one star, Jeremy Swayman, number two, and Dallas Gerrads, number three. They're pretty much the only guys who really did a lot on the stat book, so it makes the most sense. So the Mavericks are moving on. So we now have all 16 teams here. From 16, I should say, to 8. So we have now all the 8 teams left of the Elite 8. 33 shots and 1 goes in for the Mavericks. Only 21 for Maine. The Mavericks own the uh, the attack zone by a little over a minute. And there's not going to be a whole lot for stats here. Um, other than shots on goal, I guess. 33 say or 32 out of 33 and 30 or 21 out of 21 for McKay and one goal for Dallas Jarrads. There was no assists, so it wasn't a whole lot going on. Souter had six shots and uh, a little bit of penalties. There you got five shots for Daughtery and the main side. Well, it's been an exciting first round. Bye bye. Bye. A bobbling magic production. Can I listen to it?